Hello friends! From time to time, some of you ask me to review the devices and applications I use in my work. So, in this video I will show you what gear and tools I use every day. My primary computer, which I use for about 90% of all my work, is the Mac Mini M1. It's a 2020 model. I use this device for programming, video editing and music mixing. Overall, the Mac Mini performs quite well, but it's worth noting that it's not very powerful. So when I'm programming or editing videos, I close all applications that I don't need at the moment. The Mac Mini manages well with two Docker projects running simultaneously, and it does fairly well in video editing. However, there is one major downside. Adding effects to 4K videos in Final Cut Pro can lead to lags and delays, as this is quite a demanding operation. Also, I use a Satechi stand for the Mac Mini, because there are not enough ports for connecting external devices for me. Before the M1 processor came out, this was my main computer, which I used at the office and at home. It's a very handy device that I still use when traveling or when I want to work somewhere other than my desk. Even though it doesn't have M1 processor, it still does its job quite well. However, there are two things that I don't like. First, this MacBook heats up very quickly, and you can literally fry an egg on it. Second, it's very loud, and I always have to use headphones to drown out the noise. Honestly, I plan to sell this laptop, because unfortunately I don't use it often. I use two monitors, Dell S2721DS and Acer XV252QF. I use the Dell as my main monitor for work and video editing. I can say it's the best monitor I've ever had, but I'm not a designer, so I don't need perfect color reproduction. This monitor has 75Hz refresh rate, making the image a bit smoother and more pleasant than standard 60Hz monitors. I bought the Acer monitor mainly for gaming but it turned out to be very useful for my work as well. I use this monitor in vertical orientation most of the time. Usually I use it to display Messenger, Spotify and text editors where I take notes throughout the workday. As I said, I bought this monitor primarily for gaming. It has a refresh rate of up to 390Hz and I play games such as CSGO, Valorant and League of Legends on it. The monitor has an IPS panel, so it's quite versatile for both gaming and work. The animation is just phenomenal, the picture is very smooth and pleasant. I was really surprised with this monitor. Next on the list, but not in terms of priority, is the Audience Sono audio interface. I use it nearly 100% of the time that I spend at my workspace. My headphones and microphone are connected to the audio interface. The Audion Sono has an extended functionality for guitar recording, which I also use when recording guitar parts. I've been using it for almost 4 years and I've had no complaints during all this time. Sure, a Sam 7B is a classic. Fairly universal dynamic microphone used for recording vocals, streaming and podcasts. I bought it when I was more actively involved in music, but besides that, I use it every day for Zoom calls and voicing my videos. The microphone is mounted on a Rode PSA One Boom arm, which I find very convenient and reliable. My main headphones are the Bear Dynamic DT1990 Pro, and they are absolutely fantastic. I used them for mixing sounds, but now I use them throughout the day. I listen to music in them, conduct zoom calls and edit videos. These are open back headphones, they're pretty comfortable and they deliver very high sound quality. From time to time I transfer all the media data from my phone and computer to external drives, 
to always have free space on my devices. This Lacey has 2 terabytes of memory and I use it for data storage. That is, when I start running out of space on my phone, I transfer media to this storage device and forget about it for a while. I also have a second storage device, 1TB Samsung. I use it as extra memory for my Mac Mini. This device stores video and audio files for Final Cut Pro, which I use in real time when doing video or audio editing. I have two main light sources, Xiaomi monitor light and Elgato key light. I use the first device all the time, it illuminates my workspace throughout the day and allows my eyes to get less tired during work. This gadget has a handy remote control that lets you adjust the brightness and temperature of the light. The Elgato key light is turned on for zoom calls. I sit in the corner of the room and usually my face is not well seen on the camera, so this light provides all the conditions for quality video communication with my team. I used to use the built-in webcam on my MacBook, but for the past 3 years I've been using the Logitech C922 Pro. It's not to say that it's the best webcam possible, but with sufficient light it performs its duties well. From time to time I use two keyboards, the Logitech G915 TKL and a custom keyboard that I assembled myself from various parts. The custom keyboard is on my desk most of the time, but every now and then, depending on my mood, I use the Logitech keyboard. Both devices are wireless, I already have a lot of cables on and under my table, so I try to use as many wireless options as possible. I've been using the Logitech Pro X Super Light mouse for almost 4 years and it's just a super universal and convenient thing. It's very lightweight and easy to use, which makes me think I'll never trade this mouse for any other. Besides, it looks very elegant and concise. I bought this mouse for gaming, but it perfectly suits all the tasks that I have. 10 out of 10. According to YouTube Analytics, more than 90% of my viewers are not subscribers of my channel, and this saddens me a lot. So don't hesitate, subscribe to my channel to be the first to receive notifications about new content. My phone is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I bought this model specifically for the camera, which is very high quality here. 90% of the content I have was shot on this phone. During the shooting process, this phone has fallen on the floor about 10 times, but despite my clumsiness, it continues to work as quickly and reliably as it did right after purchase. When buying this iPhone, I was skeptical. This device has some inconveniences, but overall it's a great thing for everyday use and video recording. For more active shoots I have a GoPro Hero 10 camera. It's very reliable and practical. I usually use it outdoors and when I can shoot videos from my phone. The downside of this action camera is that it runs out of battery very quickly and I have to carry extra batteries with me. For programming I use two code editors, PyCharm and WebStorm. I do all tasks related to Python with the help of PyCharm. After years of working with this program, I've become very used to its functionality and try to use it not only for writing code but also I use really convenient built-in features of the PyCharm, like running projects locally in integration with Docker. Out of curiosity, I tried to switch to VS Code, but it took me 3 days and I returned back to PyCharm. In addition to that, I use WebStorm for tasks related to JavaScript. Here I develop my own mobile project. I try to use all the built-in features of this IDE that I need. For the development of the React Native app, I use Expo, which is connected to the WebStorm debugger. I use Miro to build project schemas and user stories. Here I am engaged in creating a design system, describing all components of the projects as well as developing flowcharts. 
Also, in Miro, I make mockups for my app. This service is quite versatile and allows performing different kinds of tasks. I use the free version, so all the work on the project is usually on one board. I constantly use a rectangle. It's a great program that allows me to use the space on my monitors very effectively. Often I divide my main monitor into two parts. The code editor is on the left and the browser with the documentation or other helpful stuff is on the right. As for the vertical monitor, I usually divide it into three equal parts. Spotify is at the top, Slack is in the middle and Sublime Text, where I take notes during the working day, is at the bottom. Another very important program is Clean My Mac. It's a very handy tool for quickly optimizing the performance of your computer. Clean My Mac allows you to delete unnecessary temporary files and cache files. Also, with its help you can find old objects that take up a lot of space. I use this program every 3-4 days and find it super useful. So, this was an overview of my devices and programs that I use every day. What do you think about my setup? I will be very glad to read the comments from you. Thank you guys for watching this video, I really appreciate it. See you soon!